we will go into is that right, debate on <coughs> Mayor's Rex and amendments to the Mayor's Rex. Who would like to kick off? Okay, now well, we've sort of done it, haven't we? Yep. Okay. End the Mayor's Rex, uh -huh. or now. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. far away. Okay. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, I'd like to thank um, staff for the amount of pre-work, I guess, that was done on, on the long-term plan. So the What Matters Most campaign <coughs> is a really important one for setting the scene for the draft. Um, I don't think all of it's been carried through. But it's really clear that when you ask people in the city what matters most today or this month or this year, they say things to us like they do all the time about potholes and about the cost of living. And those things are real and pressing issues for the city. When we ask people what matters most over the life of a long-term plan and for the future of our city, they do say things like climate change. They do say things like our water supply. And they recognise that those things are crucial for our city into the future. As a um, council, we are tasked with not just the day-to-day, -day, but actually the long-term future as well. And that's um, one of the reasons I was so pleased to be able to first ask a question in the consultation document and then have really good community support for an adaptation fund, which starts to address the intergenerational equity um, for our city and for our residents going into the future. While there's a lot of focus on mitigation, on lowering emissions and all of the other benefits that that can bring when it comes to health and amenity, well-being, um, as a city we are going to have to adapt over time and making sure that we start saving now for some of those big moves we're going to have to make is really important. So the adaptation planning process that's happening with our communities, being able to speed that up over time and being able to comfort our communities with the fact that we are starting to look at how we fund those really big moves, whether they be shifting community centres, shifting roads, um, whether we need to do a, a, a you know um, stack more um, buns, those kind of things, is really important. What I don't want to see is the um, the fund watered down over time and people just going, oh look, there's a pot of money, we'll just use it for little bits here and there. Um, so I'm looking forward to workshops looking at the terms of reference. Um, on that. When it comes to rating for renewals, I'm really disappointed that we weren't able to get to the point today where we could have a really good debate on how to save um, the ratepayers' money over time. Um, the current position means that we will be paying more money to do the same amount of work on our renewals, both in water and on the road. So I'm looking forward to hopefully being able to consult on that next time. It's been clear that the process um, hasn't been ideal. There's a lot of confusion within Council about the, the programs of work. So I've probably talked about that in, in one of the other debates, but uh, it's um, going to be really important that we look at the big picture as a council and not just um, the small stuff all the time, which we, we tend to do. Thanks. Thank you very much. Councillor Henstock. Oh, thank you, Mayor Phil. And I would like to applaud you for the approach, the pragmatic approach that you have taken with these Mayor's Rex, and I think that it's taken the heat out of some of the items that could have been potentially very uh, divisive and political. I, I recognise that some compromises have been made and that's what a good leader does. So I want to thank you for adopting this approach, which essentially allows everyone to have a voice on the things that matter to them. So thank you for that. A couple of things that I want to touch on um, in relation to the climate adaptation, the Mayor's Rec number one, this is a really a prudent approach. But of course the devil will be in the details, so I'm pleased to see it'll come back in the annual plan process uh, as to how those funds are going to be applied. Uh, I can't say the same for the Climate Resilience Fund for the Mayor's Rec number two. Uh, in terms of the substantive recommendation, I'm just, I'm not convinced that this is the best approach because I think that surely as a council in 2024 and going forward, we should be embedding good, strong, sustainable, resilient practices in all of our work. Uh, programs and if the amendment does pass then of course I'd be happy to support it coming back as a workshop for the members. Uh, touching on the Shirley Community Centre, thank you Mayor Phil, I'm really happy to support that. I think that's um, good to get that moving the community and Shirley have been waiting for a very long time to get that off the ground so thank you for bringing that forward. Uh, one of the issues that has caused some angst is um, 
the Hagley Park parking fees, and I've really been in two minds about that. On the one hand, uh, I used to think that uh, free parking meant uh, parking was accessible for all, but I've come to reflect that actually accessibility is the key word here, and free parking really means that those with the highest needs for accessibility, being families and with babies and toddlers and all manner of paraphernalia and elderly with uh, mobility restricted uh, residents for whom accessibility is absolutely essential, then free parking really means for them that they can't park because it's free, uh, because it, the park is full of those taking advantage of the free parking. So personally, while I'm well past the baby and toddler stage, transporting elderly parents around, uh, I have no issue with paying a little bit for parking for the proximity. So uh, I'll be supporting the amendment. Uh, finally, on the transport, um, we won't be getting the same level of subsidy from the government on a transport project, so it's entirely appropriate that we review the transport programme uh, once we get the GPS later this year. We've got to, you know, we have to review our household budgets. We've certainly got to review our council budgets. Uh, thank you, Mayor Phil, for the recommendations. I'll be supporting most, but not all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Any Councillor Peters? Thank you. Um, really pleased. Um, to see your recommendation around the Air Force Museum. I think that's a, uh, a really prudent way forward to have staff work with, with them going into the annual plan for next year. The Air Force Museum is a, a gem of our city Brilliant. and I think for us as a, as a council to talk to them and see how we might be able to help them because it is a might, um, I think is very wise. So thank you for that, that recommendation. Um, also picking up on something that's really dear in my community, um, in the Yaldhurst Memorial Hall. Um, it's been a process working through that and um, it's good to see this uh, recommendation today to see the hall passed to the local residents association there so they can get cracking and pull their supporters and their professionals and everyone together and start to plan the rejuvenation of that hall. Um, to see that war memorial, because the hall is the memorial in that case, um, actually hand it to the community for the community to take ownership and bring it back to life, I think is a huge win. And thank you for your recommendation around that. And thank you to everyone who has um, supported this through time and through those that submitted. And the decision today, um, hopefully for us to pass this into their, their hands to get cracking, I think is a, is a huge day for Yaldhurst and uh, really looking forward to that. Um, and then for the Shirley Community Centre, thank you for bringing, bringing that forward talking in the break with um, one of the local community leaders there and um, hearing the story um, has really cemented that and hopefully we can get that cracking as well so that they can have a facility built into their community again which for the, to replace the one that they lost in the earthquake. Um, the sports network plan, um, whilst I'd like to see it brought forward, I don't think I can support bringing it forward. Um, the staff have got their hands all over this. They're work, going to be working on it. It'll happen in time in due course, and if they need, we heard today with the questioning that it doesn't preclude staff from working on it if we don't bring it forward. So hopefully we can stick to the plan and get that, that sorted later. Um, Temporary South Library, not quite sure on that one, um, but I'll decide that as, as, as we land it. Um, the rating for renewals, um, I can hear the debate around that um, regards the longer term savings, but problem being that we've got a crisis right now. Every house in this country has a cost of living crisis, which we're all trying to survive through. So I think wisdom says we've got to be, do what we can as a council not to be inflationary uh, and keep our, our numbers under control today. Um, pleased that we're going to be continuing to work with the Arts Centre going forward because that's a, another gem of our city. So look, looking forward to seeing what can, the staff can work through on that in the coming year or two so that we can uh, keep that precious piece of Christchurch keep going. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Councillor McDonald. Um, yeah, thank you. Just a couple of things on the Mayor's Rex and the amendments to, to the Rex. Uh, I think, look, by and large, they're, they're relatively good and they capture the sentiment of uh, what we heard through the submissions. Um, I certainly know in my case, we spent a lot of time out in the community, right across Christchurch, actually, often with you, Phil, but uh, with others as well, uh, hearing from people. And I think these do reflect that. Um, look, I, I won't be, and my position hasn't changed on the Climate Resilience Fund, I, I do believe that debt headroom in an organisation like ours is actually the pragmatic way to manage infrastructure challenges. Um, but again, if it if it goes through, that's that's um, you know 
I'm not dying the ditch over over it at all. Um, look, I think it's good to get that Shirley Community Centre um, on the road as well. I was talking to Ali Jones before, and she said that something like five years ago she threatened to resign <laughs> if it uh, if it didn't get over the line. So I, I don't know if she's still here, but uh, that's another one in that respect, which is good. Um, and I, I guess just finally, there are two others around a park where I think, um, and I sort of compare the around a park. Uh, uh, you know, submission or, or request for funding to the Arts Centre, and they've been quite different approaches. Um, in fact, we heard from around a park, uh, they then went away and said, okay, we, we'll obviously let you work through your um, your deliberations as an elected council. Uh, I guess the Arts Centre was a, a different one in that sense, but look, it has been effective. Uh, I think actually the 860000 they're going to be receiving this next financial year is huge. Uh, and I would implore the trustees, who, and I would thank them actually initially, because they are volunteers, but would implore them to look at the structure of their organisation. Um, I think that actually, as a, and I've been through the list of the trustees, they're a very competent group of people who uh, I think should step up and look at the structure of their organisation. It's in the interests of Christchurch if they get it right. And I think what this signals is that actually we will fund them, the, give them the breathing space to get it right, uh, we'll assist them with some help in terms of a review, um, but it really is incumbent upon them as uh, trustees on behalf of the people of Christchurch to get that structure right. And I think uh, the funding mechanism we've done this today where it minimises rate impacts and gives some certainty, uh, actually certainty for the next 10 years. So there's a 750 for the next two plus the strengthening for communities funds, but a baked in half a million dollars every year that the rate payer will be paying for is a tremendous thing for them. And I, I really hope that going forward, while we've had the signs up saying to save the Arts Centre, I'd almost like to see something to say thank you for the rate payers of Christchurch. You actually have saved the Arts Centre and now it's incumbent upon the trustees uh, to work with the management of that organisation and deliver something that is effective and long term because it's not at the moment and I personally don't think they're at the point where they're prepared to accept the challenges and I think they need to. So. Thank you very much. Councillor Barber. <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, as the first time that this whole process has been quite an eye-opener uh, to me and just the tremendous amount of work involved by the staff um, who uh, at the whim of every councillor will go off and, and find the answers. So that, that's been really impressive. Uh, behind this, I'm always thinking about the rates impact on our residents. Um, it's real, it affects them, um, and we owe it to them to, to keep that in mind at all times. Uh, it's the one thing that people bring up to me when I'm out uh, talking to them is the impact. And I've had people actually say that, um, you know, they're... They may have to sell their house um, if, if rates increases continue to, to go on like this. Um, on the positive side, really happy to support uh, the Shirley Community Centre. Uh, I'm confident we'll find a, a group of local activators who will run it effectively and uh, take the burden off council. We can't keep going on um, running every uh, facility that we fund. It, uh, it needs people in a community to step up. Um, as far as the sports network plan is uh, concerned, really excited about that, really excited to see artificial turf coming. Um, I have full confidence in the team to deliver the program uh, that they've been planning for quite some time. <clears throat> Arana Park uh, is an icon of our city and I'm really glad that we're supporting them. Uh, I compliment them on their approach. I think they did uh, an absolutely fantastic job of highlighting their needs and their importance to us and, and to the city. Um, the Art Centre, um, the whole city loves the Art Centre. It, it's an amazing facility. Uh, my father went to university there back in the day when it was um, the engineering school from Canberra University was there. I'm really pleased to support its funding. Um, it was never about whether we would fund them or not. It was always going to be the quantum and were they being effectively managed. Um, and they conducted a, a campaign to bring that to our attention, which is fine, uh, but I feel like they brought a tank to a, a, a cup of tea, um, which it should have just been a, a, a discussion, and we could have got there if uh, they'd taken a different approach. But they didn't, and so we're here today. Um, I'd also like to congratulate the Mayor. I think uh, you've done a great job of actually bringing us all in-house, finding agreement and showing leadership um, on the things we've discussed. I think it's, uh, it's been really positive, and um, yeah, I'm really pleased we were landing so far. Thank you. Councillor Harrison Hunt, please. Kia ora koutou. Uh, I'd like to firstly thank staff for the thousands of hours that they've put into this. Yeah. It's a phenomenal thing. I actually sometimes see them here at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that I really admire in staff. Um, the second one is, is Mary. Um, and with the, the leadership that you have, particularly in this space, 
um, after um, the turbulent time we've had, um, I really commend you for the work that you've done and enabling staff to be able to bring this to us. And lastly, as of, of Phil, uh, again, you did manage to bring some, some form of consensus and actually you brought the energy back into, into the chain where I'm actually excited to come to work. And, uh, and you bring humour. So I'd like to firstly commend you, you guys. The next one is the community of the 7,000 submitters who, who gave their thoughts. And I do believe that this Mayor's recommendation reflects a lot of that. Um, there are going to be some issues or some uh, programs of which I'm not quite sure on, on the basis of the capital endowment fund. Um, I felt like some parts of the city actually wouldn't have minded their rates being going towards, for example, around a park instead of it being dipped into a slush fund. Um, but that's something different. Uh, intergenerational equity is something that everyone here knows that I'm really passionate about, which means balancing the books across the whole 10 years instead of actually pushing, kicking the can down the road. And you're going to see a theme throughout the day around what that might look like, whether that's a hybrid of or a full buy-in to the future. Um, you're going to see that today. I am uh, in, in, in a line with Councillor Templeton around rating for renewals. It is going to be a big hit today. And I do understand that. So therefore, I am supportive of the report to push it out into year three. But I would like to not see that go any further than year three. Uh, Hagley Park fees. Now, I noticed the premise of the implementation of the parking provisions were to stop nine to fivers from, ni from nine to five, Monday to Friday. Therefore, I will not be supportive of adding parking fees on the weekends. I don't feel like that was the premise of uh, or the intention of um, staff's um, cost savings. And I feel like it is counterproductive in light of accessibility for those families um, who want to actually skip going to Margaret Mayhe um, with all of the noise and hustle and bustle at that park and be able to go to somewhere um, that is quieter, that's accessible. And funnily enough, I actually saw uh, Chrissy Major and, um, and your grandkids there, the beautiful grandkids there one day. So that was really nice to see. Lastly is the CNZ funding. I'm supportive of Councillor Moore's uh, amendments on the basis of us building a massive stadium coming up of which we need to be able to invest in um, to be able to live work and play and if we're going to be doing that as the mayor says um, we need to be able to enable that and be proactive in ensuring that economic development is happening before the stadium is built not when it is uh, therefore that is me thank you very much for your time thank you councillor cotter yep thank you hey look and thank you um for the formation of these recommendations after finding some common agreement, or perhaps less likely to say, uh, content less contentious um, recommendations. So I think it's a really good way to go forward starting the day. Um, now, Climate Resilience Fund, I, I see this as preparing for costs that we will need to stump up with um, in the future. And hoping, I'm hoping that we will actually be partnering with the Crown in this inevitability. It's not a disaster fund but it's more like a creeping sea level rise and preparing for retreat costs. So it's an accumulation of a, of a kind of a buffer fund. We need to start now. We don't know when it will be needed. Um, but as I am re, um, reinforcing that it will be, in my view, partnership with the Crown, because the Crown won't want to bear all the costs. We don't want to bear all the costs, but someone's going to have to pay. Um, thank you for the support with the Community Centre at Shirley, um, bringing that forward. Um, the community board has agreed on a way forward just last week at our meeting, um, and this involves partnerships with design, delivery, and operation. So that's the work in progress, so that little bit of money coming forward for this year will really help. Um, the Arts Centre, look, what we're agreeing on today with the extra two years funding is going to provide some surety for these people, and that's really what they need. And I know it's been said, but I, I fully agree with that. And also the review will be hugely helpful to all of us, as it will be for Arana Park and as, as it was proven to be for Ferrymead Heritage Park. There's real value in doing that work. Um, and the sports fields are hugely important, but we're the dependent. Um, so I'm really grateful for the resurfacing work that happened in St Albans Park quite a few years ago now, maybe five or six. It was re-turfed. It's not an artificial turf, but it's our outdoor but it's enabled um, the games to go ahead on the weekends in the wet. It's such a good surface now, and it's so good to see those kids out there where they couldn't previously. So artificial turf does the same, and it gets everybody out there. It's fantastic. And although Councillor Hanson's amended budget may need tweaking by the end of the day, 
Um, he has indicated he's pragmatic about this, as we all must be. But I think the sports fields is a really good one. So that's really it from me. Great work. Well done. Thank you very much. Okay, here for Councillor Moore. Thank you. Yeah, um, a couple of weeks ago when the Mayor brought the recommendations back, my first thought was he's done pretty bloody well, actually, to factor in that many different submissions and different views and all of these demands. Um, so thank you for your work on that. Um, sports field network plan, your yeah, staff are all over it, but what we're budgeting is, is ultimately very little to be done in the first five years, and we had so many submissions from different sport clubs pleading with us to do things sooner rather than later. We've got pitches that have been unusable uh, all winter for years in many different parts, so we, we've got to get cracking on it, uh, or on something. Um, just on events funding, so the consultation asked if people wanted to spend more money on events, but I think that question in many ways is a bit misleading, because what we didn't ask is if they're comfortable or significantly less events over previous years, because that's exactly what the plan was budgeting for. So if the wording was slightly changed, you'd have a very, very different outcome. But what we also didn't tell submitters is that bids on events at the new stadium, for example, mean that you not only get the economic benefits and keeping people in jobs, businesses and businesses, but you end up raking a whole lot of money back in food and beverage sales to a council venue, um, plus if you've got a ticket levy in place, the money starts to flow back very, very, very quickly, and that helps pay for the new stadium. Uh, if you win the bid on Adele concert, that Councillor Kewan talks about quite a lot, you've got three sold out nights, 36,000, they're all buying food and beverage and they're paying a ticket every year. So it adds up real, real quick. So it's a bit of a money go around. But when it's done well, it works and it pays for itself. That's why councils do it. So $683 million a year uh, was spent on a new stadium. And even those who didn't support in the first place, they want to see the thing used and not there to sit there empty. Um, I am concerned that the precedent being set, a restrictive cap was set on the number of concerts it can have. Uh, now we're pretending like we won't necessarily need funding available for event bids. The reality in the event market is that you do, you do need money for uh, bids. So Dunedin and Wellington aren't silly. They will have budget to bid for events. And if they start continuing, well, if they continue to have poach events off us when we've got this new stadium, we're going to start to look very, very silly. Um, during our hearings, we heard from a hotelier who told us about the real lack of confidence in investing in Christchurch. That's really, really, really concerning. Um, it shouldn't be that way at all. Uh, we are going through an economic downturn. Um, but this is sort of an intentional decision to welcome that further economic down to where we don't have to. Now is the, it's sort of a once in a generation opportunity or lifetime even um, to accelerate economic growth and truly put ourselves on the map to clear ourselves open for business. So our airport should be busy with people coming here, not busy with people going to the airport to go to other events uh, in the rest of the country, which is a regular occurrence. So even with my amendment, the numbers there are a cut on not just the previous year, but uh, add up to millions less than actually the proposal we were looking at in December. Um, so I didn't go for the full amount, it's um, a fraction of, uh, as a compromise and recognising the financial situation. Um, so the amount of 1.5 in the 24, 25 years, so that was actually the amount that the Mayor put forward and um, there was generally agreement on a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure why the number then shifted to 1.2, but whatever the case, the amount was just to put it back to where it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, but at the end of the day, if you are comfortable, continue to lose events to Dunedin Wellington, then by all means vote no. This isn't everyone's cup of tea. I see the value in it. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Thank you. Councillor Johansson. Uh, I just wanted some clarity on the process. Are we just debating the amendments that we've put forward to the Mayor's recommendations, or are we voting on all of the Mayor's Debating on all. Debating okay, so I didn't get an answer to the question around strengthening communities funding. So in particular, the one in Arana Park, so can I just get that clarified before I debate? Is that okay? So uh, the question was pre-allocating uh, funding from strengthening communities. We've got an open, contestable process that we're in the middle of for strengthening no, communities to allocate funding based on application. As part of the LTP, we're being asked to make decisions to allocate that fund outside of that process. Yep. And I just yep. wanted to check yeah. just clarifying um, the that question. the resolutions that we're passing are legal. Or, or that they've mitigated the risk of, you know, not being yeah. acceptable. So can I ask uh, John, are you OK with the, if we interrupt the debate? The mm -hmm. Yep, great. Uh, the proposed allocation to Arana Park is broadly consistent with the year-on historical allocation to Arana Park uh, by Council. Uh, it was provided for within the recent uh, Strengthening uh, Community Fund deliberations and uh, uh, we're confident that we can uh, work around uh, that and uh, 
uh, service the needs of uh, other council and its decision making processes. So we, we don't see uh, uh, anything untoward with this in this instance. Sorry, it's probably more a question of legal because we're in the middle of an. We've amended. We've amended standing and orders. Done that. Yeah, and we have, we've. Uh, set aside standing orders anyway. So, because so. So, we're just an issue with the Mayor's Welfare Fund, where we've had to reimburse the Mayor's Welfare Fund $100,000 because we didn't go through the proper process. Yeah, I'm but just that was done. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but it was done. Trying to get an understanding how an LTP decision can be made to a separate, contestable, open process that we're currently in the middle of with the wording that's been put in front of us, which is... Fact, do we change the to wording agree. to agrees to support... Could it, from should it say something like agrees to consider? Now, your your yeah. decision whether you want yeah. to do it is that that's your decision. Um, whether you can do it is yes, you can. One, uh, because of the advice John's giving, but also because the Local Government Act legislation allows you to make a decision that's contrary to policy if you're clear why you're making it. So if you're asking can you do it, yes, you can. Whether you want to do it, that's up to you to decide. Well, so should the wording then explain that we're being inconsistent with our current strengthening communities process to make the allocation uh, and that the quantum will be deducted from the amount of strengthening communities funding that's contestable? Uh, well, it will, uh, it, will be, it will be taken from the strengthening communities fund. I think that's mm. clear. But um, do you give, it, give me a couple of uh, minutes, mm, and I'll just clarify mm -hmm. the clause in the legislation and what you do have to cover okay, off thank you. Okay. and come back carry to... Carry on in your general so debate if you want to. Debate. We'll go back to debate now. Are you want to debate any of this? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I too want to acknowledge the work that staff and, and the organisation has done alongside the Mayor, the Deputy Mayor and uh, a number of my council colleagues. Um, there's a few things in here that I'm not, not really very supportive of. Um, and I'll, I'll just go through those quite quickly, but a number of them I won't speak to, I, I am in support of. So um, just to, to highlight the ones that I did express concern on. Uh, the first one I just wanted to talk about was the active travel targeted rate uh, being merged into a uniform annual general charge. Uh, I think how we fund cycleway should be consistent with, or, or active travel should be consistent with how we fund other roading projects. And what we do for other roading projects is we do it as part of the general rate rather than have us have it into the uniform annual general charge. So I, I strongly disagree with changing that. Increasing the uniform annual general charge effectively means people with lower value properties face bigger rates increases, uh, and I don't support that. Um, I just wanted to uh, speak against uh, the car parking charges in Botanic Gardens and Hagley Park. I just do not accept the rationale for the changes are needed to stop all day parkers at these facilities. From my experience, there's been ample car parks available during the day at these facilities, and there's been no real evidence provided to show the scale or frequency of the problem we're trying to address. I'm also concerned that the consultation document did not accurately reflect the parking places where these charges would be introduced, as there are multiple car parks that it applies to that were not clearly highlighted in the consultation document. And there are still many on-street parks that have all-day parkers in the central city that if council wanted to increase revenue, it could apply charges to. Uh, and many of these are adjacent to the ones where we're bringing in the car parking charges. I also am concerned that these charging for these car parks will set a precedent that we will see car parking charges introduced at Parikori Metro Sports and at Margaret Mahi Playground. As the same arguments, perhaps even stronger, can be made the impact of all-day parkers at these facilities. During a cost of living crisis, I think the last thing we should be doing as the happiest city in New Zealand is making people unhappy by charging them to use our parks and our playgrounds. So I, I acknowledge the work that um, the Mayor has done in these recommendations. Uh, I, as I said, I'm supportive of a number of them, particularly around trying to put some more effort into biodiversity and environmental partnerships. Um, and uh, I look forward to having uh, the additional consideration of a number of the other amendments to the to the plan, but thank you for the work that's been done. Um, I just did want to have my vote recorded against um, some of the ones that I've mentioned, and hope that we get. We'll, we'll the do that as, as we to come to that. it. Yeah. Thank you. Have you, Councillor Field? Yes. Kia ora, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just yeah, like 
it's a lot of it's been said already um, in terms of the, the work that staff have done, like um, absolutely tell talk all the the, um, the comments made there, and some people have said um, thank you to yourself, your, your worship, around the way that you've um, built a consensus around a lot of these um, uh, mayor's recommendations. I really um, commend you for that. I, I absolutely agree with those comments, um, yeah. and. Other councillors have acknowledged the difficulties of the the cost of living crisis that we're going through. Absolutely, like people are hurting, and that, and that is really difficult. However, that shouldn't um, stop us thinking about the big picture and in, in the long term planning for our city. Um, we actually have to make some really tough decisions around the long term future and sustainability of our city. Um, a couple of things that that stand out for me: um, the accelerating climate adaptation and climate resilience fund. Um, on Banks Peninsula, for example, like uh, more and more difficulties every year, every winter. Um, some communities cut off. Um, the state highway is impacted, and and you know I think that in terms of the of the um, the viability of our city, I think people don't realise just how vulnerable the major freight routes are out of the port of Littleton. There are you know slips on on the state highway there that. That are often, uh, you know, can can actually really impact on the ability of freight to to leave Littleton safely, and it's quite it's very vulnerable. So I think that we actually need to fund and support those things and, and plan for our future, um, a, a climate impacted future. The um, I appreciate the um, the recommendation around Akaro wastewater. We've heard a lot of sub submissions during the during the hearings process that have raised some concerns about that about that program of work. I think we have to be pragmatic and keep that on budget. That's really, really important and work with the community through some of those challenges. And I, I really employ, implore um, my colleagues and staff to, to really um, be, be, be engaged with, with the community there in, in working through those challenges. A um, couple of other things. Um, Higley Park parking, a few people have commented on that. I categorically support the amendment um, that Councillor Coca has raised. I think that we should park in the weekends. I think that's a fair and equitable, um, uh, sorry, charge in the weekends. It's a fair and equitable thing to do. Um, and just another couple of quick comments on the biodiversity fund uh, increases and environmental partnership fund um, increases. I think that's a really good pragmatic step in the right direction as well. I really appreciate the consensus that my colleagues have, have shown on that and absolutely support those. Kia ora. Okay. Yep, Councillor McClellan. Um, I wasn't going to debate, but I thought I'd use my good. time. And, we'll move on um, to the next one. But I've, I've decided, <laughs> I decided that that would be unwise. Um, uh, look, I, just, I thought I might give some visibility to something that hasn't been touched on, which was the city uh, vacant land differential you know, anecdotally, that's made a really big difference in the CBD. Um, there's a misperception, and I mean, I, I, I'm glad that this is now going to be rolled out to some suburban communities, one of which is my own, but also Sydenham, and also um, and New Brighton as well. And I think there's a perception that this is a punitive tool that we that we use, but the reality is, it's not a fee for not developing. It's a fee for not developing or keeping your land in a tidy, orderly state. And the reality of not doing that, it forces a cost on, on all of us. We have an urban regen team that go and, and try and fix urban blight. And, and we have some landowners out there that uh, often this is a really small part of their holdings. It's not important. They may be overseas. It's just not something they think about. So this is really a tool that forces them to um, wake up a little, have a think. And, and do some simple, easy, cheap things to make the place we live in better for everyone. Um, I will support the, uh, the extra money for the Arts Centre and the amendment. Um, I was at a community meeting the other day and the local resident group referred to the Arts Centre as, as their heart and they referred to Hagley Park as, their, as the lungs of, of their community. So I think that um, while I accept that the, the doors aren't going to close at the, at the recommended the mayoral recommended amount, I think that a little bit of breathing room uh, won't won't break break the bank. And the other thing is, I wanted to thank Sarah also for being pragmatic when it comes to rating for renewals. That's a really important conversation we need to have next year. It's a matter of financial prudence, and it's it's a big one we need to tackle. And I think tackling it. Uh, via the CD is, is the most appropriate way to do it. So, yeah, thank you. 
Alrighty. So what we'll do, uh, Councillor Kuhn. Yeah, sorry. I think most things have been cut off um, or covered off. Sorry. Uh, the uh, certainly not much in the budget's been cut off. The uh, I just want to say a, a couple of words. First up, um, thank you to all the staff that have worked super hard on this. Um, I wish uh, we were looking at slightly lower numbers or considerably lower numbers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for getting us through. Wouldn't it be lovely and collegial and, and a shining example of a New Zealand's happiest city if uh, this was the finishing point and, uh, and we were about to sign off our, our rates based on the Mayor's recs and uh, then do a couple of verses of Kumbaya. Um, but I, I doubt that will be the case. Um, so there's a couple of things in here that I'll vote against, but I just want to explain one of them, and uh, that is the Shirley Community Centre. I don't have enough information uh, for that um, on demand in the area versus all the available spaces that are currently there. I note there's $40,000 put in for OPEX, once again, a, 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 an odd amount, um, I, I think, and general rules of owning property, you spend 1% of your um, annual rent, or the value of the property, sorry, a, a year in maintenance. So that's just the maintenance bill, or is that for someone to operate, or is that a, a big chunk of the power? Um, is, where's the rates? Uh, if you've borrowed the $4 million, you owe um, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in interest. I mean, we say something's got a 40 grand OPEX tacked on once you've spent your four million or three and a half million dollars, but it's it's not actually true. And then we wonder why rates keep going up every year, well beyond the rate of inflation. Um, so uh, that one there, I struggle with until we have more. I'm not saying not to do it, but I would need to be convinced before I sign off any other community centres, libraries, swimming pools, anything in the city. We do have the most libraries per capita of any city in the world I can find. I'm still waiting for someone to take up the challenge to find me another one. Our pools are heading in that direction. Um, we've got more than a thousand parks. It's an expensive city to run. It's a very happy city though, um, but it's expensive. And, uh, oh, except for Yanni. They didn't ring him for the survey. Um, uh, finally, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, to the, the Mayor for the way that we've done this this time round, and to all my colleagues that um, bring in some really, really good debate ideas, concepts each time. I don't agree with you all, all the time, but some things we do agree on, uh, but the one thing we do agree on is we, I think we are trying to get the best for our city as we move forward. Okay, righto, thank you. Uh, Councillor Scandrick, please. Yeah, um, Thank you. Um, I really do want to thank the staff. You know, 104, we started with around 140 amendments, totaling $228 million. The work and the changes that have gone through the 18 months has been huge. And I do not think that anyone really understands the workload that our teams have gone through. And I say teams, it's not just the three guys at the end of the table, it's a huge amount of people. Um, audit and risk, commented about, you know, like, when's it going to stabilise? And I made the comment about, well, that's democracy. And actually, you could bring amendments right to the very end. And I just think that's where we kind of, our knowledge kind of stops because we're looking at ourselves. And I'm really pleased hearing around the table that actually everybody around this table is actually looking at the city as a whole. Um, The last 10 years have been a huge change in a lot of things, not just from the earthquake, but our knowledge in um, the environment. And I was talking to a couple of people from the um, Apawaho River Network, and as a community board some time ago, we came up and had consensus with the mid Heathcote Apawaho plan. And that's the kind of like the first time it had, we'd worked on it for so long, community, council, everybody was on to it. And we all agreed to the plan. Then obviously the earthquake changed things. But then if we looked at the plan today as we were talking about it, so much knowledge has been gained in the last 10 years with regards to environmental change and the change of our city, etc. So in a sense, it's almost kind of lucky that we didn't start working on that because we are so... Much more have much more knowledge now. I think our next stage and this long-term plan is really 
laying that foundation is what we do and how we become more efficient and knowledgeable on working together with our environment and our city needs. And I think that this LTP is going to set that foundation. So thank you so much for the work you've done. Um, there's going to always be work needed, but when I meet people from outside Christchurch, it is incredibly, it's almost a surprise that how excited they are about our city, because usually with parochialism you get you know the, the blues hanging kind of on, on the Crusaders and all that kind of thing. But everybody that I'm meeting from outside Christchurch who are coming here and experiencing it are saying wonderful things about this city. So we are getting it right as a team going forward for the entire city. So um, thank you all very much. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kaka. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to speak to a few um, points. Obviously, we'll support the um, climate um, resilience and climate adaptation um, funds. Um, I wanted to thank Sarah um, for bringing those forward and also just to Pauline and Tyrone, who spoke really beautifully about that. Thank you. Um, the Environmental Partnership Fund, um, Pauline, Celeste and I worked really hard on that with the support of um, staff. Boyd, thank you. Um, for bringing that over the line and into um, the Mayor's recommendations. I think um, we've come with an excellent um, option there for people to vote on. Um, I agree with Yanni about the active travel rate um, with the UAGC. I mean, it's a flat rate anyway, um, but it, um, I don't think it should be combined with the UAGC. Um, should a community centre, I voted against that in the draft, much to Pauline's uh, um, hatred, um, <laughs> but um, I, will, I will be supporting that today because um, now I know better. Um, <laughs> and finally, I just wanted to talk about the Hagley Park um, charging because I think people might think that's quite an odd thing for me to have brought forward, um, and possibly it is, but the reason I've done that is because as a Mayor's recommendation, we've decided to charge during the week and I think that's unfair to people who might, um, you know, work on the weekend and want to go to Hagley Park during the week, or for um, you know mothers with children who might want to go to Hagley Park during the week. Why should they have to pay because they're looking after kids, or why should older people who've got time to go there in the week as well? Why should they have to pay? It doesn't seem fair to me. So if you're going to charge, charge the whole time or don't charge at all. So it's one of the two. Um, and so that's why I brought that forward. I will support charging purely because it's not an expensive rate. People do have local parks that they can go to. There are other methods of travel to get there. So you don't have to park there if you want to go to Hagley Park. So um, I think that this, um, to me, is the best way forward with that. Okay, so what... I'll do. Thank you very much for everyone's input. 